Welcome to part one of rebuilding a large Clarkson single cylinder vertical steam engine. This is examination and diagnostics. And the first thing is obvious, I should not have picked such a long title. But nevertheless, off we go. Having a quick cursory glance at the engine, it's not too badly machined, the flywheel actually looks alright. And the crankshaft looks okay too. Could it be that I've finally got an engine to resurrect that is okay? Well actually no, I've already had a look at it before I took the video. This engine was bought from the auction site that we all know and love, and it wasn't a lot of money, it was quite cheap for what it is, so I'm just not going to complain. Maybe the builder thought that the cylinder and the steam chest cover may try to escape, I don't know, I've never seen so many lock nuts. I've seen a lot worse than this. I'm actually quite impressed by the little wheel, it looks like a ship's wheel. If it did what it was supposed to do, that would help, but it doesn't. It doesn't move the valve gear at all. It gets about halfway and then jams solid. As you can see, it's not doing anything now. So at the moment, the engine's not capable of reversing, if it was capable of running at all. I did put some compressed air into the engine prior to making this video, but it did absolutely nothing other than made a hissing noise. If you look at this drop arm that I'm handling at the moment, this causes the expansion link to slide back and forth, and it's very nicely drilled and very decorative, and that's really all it is, because it's not tightly fastened to the shaft that is supposed to turn it. Also, the other shaft, I think the geometry is a little bit out. I'll look at that in detail later. When I look at these old engines for the first time, I try and get into the mindset of the builder, and on this one I'm not quite sure what's going on until I look at the steam inlet, and I notice that it's just a shallow bush pressed into the hole, and in the hole there isn't a thread at all. Doing this reminds me of something I did a while back. I had a loose tooth and I got really fed up of it, so I pulled it out with a pair of surgical forceps. And there's nothing quite like the taste of steam oil on these surgical forceps that I pulled the tooth out with. At this point I'd better add a health and safety notice I cannot, under any circumstances, recommend DIY dentistry in the workshop environment. Anyway, back to the engine. The exhaust was even worse. This bush was very, very shallow. It just fell out. And then I realised what had gone on. I'm pretty sure that the builder was supposed to drill these holes, tapping size, for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. And I think he got a bit confused and drilled the hole three eighths of an inch. So instead of fixing it, he just put a brass plug in. I may be wrong on this because I don't have a drawing for this engine. It's something that I would have done in my early years. Looking around the cylinder, you will notice that the holes for the cylinder head studs have been drilled too deep, and these are very unsightly. So I really can't live with it. I'm going to clad the cylinder. And one method is to use strips of mahogany all the way around the cylinder, held in place with brass bands. Another thing puzzles me with this engine. Why someone has removed the name Clarkson, which is normally built into the casting. Very, very odd. There's a little bit of play on the big end, but there's a lot more play on the small end. Yes, as you can see, it's really wobbly. You can actually see it better on the video than you can with the naked eye. The workmanship on this engine is not too good and not too bad, it's about sort of average. There are mistakes that have been corrected and obvious mistakes. This worries me a little bit, it's very bad workmanship, the cylinder cover has been turned a lesser diameter than the cylinder itself. And when the bottom cylinder cover has been fitted, the studs have distorted the metal on the cover. And this just looks a bit naff, so I think a nice brass band might be in order, I don't know till I get the engine apart. The bottom cylinder cover's going nowhere, it's held very tightly to the cylinder, so that's a good thing. But the best thing about this engine is this really nice little hand wheel. I do quite like that. Thanks for watching, I hope you found it useful.